Good afternoon, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from Cali. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. I also want to give praises to the um, Earthly Mother, the Holy Spirit, gives us knowledge and understanding in these last days. I wanted to talk a little bit today about the, the eclipse that happened yesterday. <clears throat> I got a video here um, that I got from uh, Rap the News. I like to listen to. He kind of has like a lot of things going on. It was going on in the sky and things that are uh, these anomalies that are coming coming on the earth. He has a couple of videos he put out. Um, I shared with the brethren this morning because uh, you know my whole family stayed home yesterday. Wanted to check out the uh, the eclipse. And when we first got up, it was really really cloudy. So I kind of waited to when the eclipse was going to begin. And I said, if it's you know if the clouds don't start to dissipate, we you know we're going to try to go up to the uh, to the mountains and kind of see up that way. About thirty minutes, we can actually get up in the mountains so we can get a little bit higher up elevation, hopefully get above the clouds. Well, uh, we went outside and looked up, and my kids were like, "Hey, you know we can see it." So you could actually see the sun, which was actually it was really small, but you could see it kind of through the clouds, and you can start to see it. It was getting eclipsed by something. We assumed it was the moon, so we were all excited. We we're kind of just hanging out outside, just you know looking. And then, um, so we're kind of checking out for about 10, 15 minutes. And all of a sudden this big uh, ball of light popped up and we found that really, really weird. Cause we kept looking, I'm like, hold on. I said, you know, we were out there for about an hour and you can see that the, uh, there was a, sh there were shadows outside. It was getting darker, but this big ball of light was there and you, but there was, it wasn't getting eclipsed by anything. So we were out there, I was taking pictures and kind of trying to see what we could see. And it was just this huge ball of light. So, you know, we kind of just, we're just kind of dumbfounded, just, ch just chilling out there, hanging out. Um, we kind of noticed that the shadows were going to different directions. And um, so we, we didn't know exactly what was going on. Um, so we were kind of, I was kind of waiting to see what was going to happen after the, after the effect, after everything was going on, if you we were going to start posting some videos about some things that they saw. And I saw a couple, but then, um, the videos that came out today, that wrapped the news here, put out, <clears throat> were pretty mind blowing. So I wanted to share with the brethren and share some scriptures as, um, from some, from someone from the Bible, but some from the other books that kind of maybe give some understanding as to what's going on. You know, I feel that we actually saw a, a really huge sign yesterday and the vast majority of the world was la having a great time laughing up barbecuing and everything else and the sign just totally passed them by you know and that's how it's supposed to be because it's supposed to be like the days of noah so these people are you know I i'm sure <laughs> i was talking to um, my son earlier and i'm like hey you know what it's probably going to be like you know when during the time of noah everybody's just kind of having a great old time and all of a sudden it starts to rain and people want to start partying and everything else because it hadn't rained until that time and then you know they they thought it was like a, a chance to uh, party and have a great time not knowing that destruction was coming. Same kind of thing that happened yesterday. You know, I said people are looking at this eclipse and they're all kind of happy that nothing really happened. But I feel like that was a sign for the elect, for the Hebrews, for the true Hebrews that are awakened at this last hour. You know, we're on countdown mode now, 33 days, you know, until the uh, Revelation 12 sign. So, you know, there's, anything can happen at this point. You know, we need to be putting in a lot of work, studying, learning, you know, letting the Most High use us. Um, however, you know, he he sees fit, you know, open up the eyes of the people with the seed. You know, I've noticed that a lot of people have a lot of questions. Um, you know, I would love to be able to answer a lot of the questions. I said, but I don't like to answer questions just, with, you know, just the way I feel. I like to use scripture in order to... Um, explain how I, you know, what I feel or how I come to these conclusions or my thoughts. And I can't always do that. But what I hope to do is maybe make some videos in the future to kind of go into some of the things that I see that I've seen through scriptures. And, I, and it's also because I also read a lot of other books. And so my thinking of the way that I see things is going to be a little bit different than a lot of other people. Okay. And if you haven't really been exposed to a lot of these other books, then, you know, we might not agree and that's okay. You know, I've, I've learned to, you know, Hey, if someone has a different understanding at that point maybe that's just the, the time and that's that's the level that they're at and you know and that's just the way the most high, ultimately the most high puts us in certain levels in certain classrooms and that's where we're at so if you're at a certain level i'm at a certain level we might not see eye to eye on certain things and that's okay but we can be respectful with one another okay i hope to make some um, videos here in the future but what i want to do right now is i want to concentrate on what we saw yesterday and what that probably means through scripture for the hebrews Okay, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this first video. I have a couple of videos to show you. Let's take a look at this one first. I to focus on the sun. Basically, there is no moon in front of it. 
that sun is going out and that's what it looks like there is no planet or ship or anything uh, eclipsing this the sun is going out and you see it slowly going out you it's already dark there's nothing moving across the sun there I did an up close on it so you can see it's just going out so the sun went completely the fuck out you know and it stayed there there's nothing in front of it it has that was pretty amazing to see that brethren you know there, there was a big huge light and it just went out you know if you look at the way an eclipse is supposed to be you're supposed to be able to see something kind of enveloping you know the planet you know or the heavenly body and it didn't really look like that you know so and it was weird because and where we're at it was supposed to have been about 60 percent uh i think 60 percent or a little bit more totality as far as coverage and it didn't do that at all yesterday and i think that's the same case for a lot of people i was seeing some people that were back east i don't know if it was georgia the guy was saying they were supposed to be like 90 percent totality and he said maybe it might have been 20 or 30 percent so the eclipse didn't work the way a normal eclipse works and that should have you know raised some red flags to a lot of people you know but let's read something real quick out of the book of Mark, chapter 13, let me see here, verses 24 through 30. A couple things going on right here. Mark 13, uh, 24 through 30. But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Now, a thing with that verse is really important. It says, but in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Well, a lot of people don't understand that they, they, they are stuck in that Christian doctrine when the whole seven year tribulation period, you know, when the church is actually going to be um, going through a lot of things, you know, going through their tribulation period. But, but what they fail to realize is, you know, Hebrews have been already going through tribulation. This is marking the end of the tribulation period for the Hebrews. Okay, the tribute, you know, there's a tribulation is going to start to begin for the other nations and probably for a lot of the other Hebrews who have not been awakened. They're going to go through a tribulation period as well. Okay, um, but let's get some scripture that kind of goes through that really quick. First Peter 4 and 17. I'm going to show you that the Hebrews have already been going through a tribulation period. First Peter 4 and 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. And if it first began at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? Let's go to 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Okay. <clears throat> so that's telling you right there that if you read it from 1 Peter 4 and 17 again, that the judgment is going to begin at the house of the Most High. And again, if it be first began at us, what shall the end be of them that not obey the gospel of the Most High? And that's the most, you know, the Gentiles, of course, aren't obeying the gospel. Okay. But you look at First Peter 4 and 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, so there's a righteous remnant that the Most High is going to save because they're, they're not appointed to wrath. Okay. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? The ungodly is talking about the Gentiles and the sinner is talking about the two thirds of our people who are still sinning, who have not been called back. So there's two groups there, okay? So you got your two-thirds who are going to go through a tribulation period, and you also have your ungodly who would also be the Gentiles, okay? So you got two groups right there. And to show you that this is actually something that comes from the new, uh, from the Old Testament, we're going to take a look at that real quick. Why don't you guys skip on up to uh, Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 29. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city, which is called by, nine, by my name. That is Jerusalem, Hebrews, okay? And should ye be utterly unpunished? This is talking about the other nations. Ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. So there's going to be the sword, which is judgment, to every everyone else, okay? So he's already, you know, been dealing with us. We broke the broke the law, such as the commandments. We've been under the curses from the time of from Daniel going through um, the Babylonian captivity all the way till now. That's why when you read that part in Mark 24, Mark 13 and 24, it says, uh, but in those days after that tribulation, the tribulation that we've already been going through, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. That's exactly what you saw right yesterday. The sun was darkened and the moon right there was not giving light. Look at that picture right there. 
Does that not pick, uh, fit that perfectly? Let's take a look at that really quick one more time. The sun was being darkened. Let's go right here. Look at it one more totally time. Totally going out. You, it's already dark. There's nothing moving across the sun there. I did an up close on it so you could see. It's just going out. So the sun went completely the fuck out. You know? And it stayed there. There's nothing in front of it. It has turned black. Just like the Bible said it was going to turn black. You know, and we're sitting here trying to figure this whole thing out. And we just need to open up the scriptures and see that it's right there. You know, it turned completely black. And now it's going to light up again by itself. Okay, let's continue reading a little bit more on this Mark. Okay, Mark 13, 26. Actually, let's start with 25. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Okay? So, you know, it's like a time frame we're starting to see here. It's kind of playing out right now. Okay? Let's finish up. Let's read to 30. Uh, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Now we're starting to see a lot of these things, these things up in the sky. A lot of people didn't realize that this happened yesterday. Okay. I didn't quite see it till I saw this video this morning, you know, and then I, so I studied and I prayed, you know, asked for some more understanding and I was led to some of these scriptures and we're trying to put this puzzle together. That's what we're at the time in we're in right now. We're working on putting puzzles together, putting things together, learning and growing and sharing with the brethren, you know, let's go ahead and read a little bit here from uh, Luke 21, uh, 24 through 32. Uh, you know, we all are familiar with a lot of these scriptures, but we're going to start to actually link them up with some other scriptures from other books. I'm going to read a little bit actually after Luke uh, from the Psalms of uh, Solomon. I don't think a lot of people have heard of that before, but actually Solomon wrote a book of Psalms as well. Okay, but let's go ahead and read first Luke 21. We'll start at tw 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay. Now, what I want to read there is, uh, this is actually talked about even more in a book called the Psalms of Solomon. Let me get that real quick. Let me see. This would be in the uh, Old Testament pseudepigrapha. Okay. And it talks about how we're going to be scattered and what that means, okay? Here we go. This is the book of Solomon. Also, the Psalms of Solomon. Here we go. They were scattered over the whole earth by these lawless ones. For the heavens withheld rain from, the fa from falling on the earth. Springs were stopped from the perennial springs far underground to those in the high mountains. For there is no one among them who practice righteousness or justice. Now, when it's talking about the water being stopped, it's talking about knowledge. There is no knowledge and understanding in the world. And see, when you read certain things like in uh, Revelations 11, it talks about how they don't, you know, there, there's no water, there's no rain. You know, when when the Hebrews were, um, had lost all knowledge and understanding, you know, all of the understanding of the world was gone. Okay. And that's what this is talking about right here. So let me go ahead and start. Uh, let me continue. For there is no one among them who practice righteousness or justice. This is talking about the Gentiles. From their leader to the commonest of the people, they were in every kind of sin. The king was a criminal and the judge disobedient and the people sinners. Okay. And continue here. See, Lord, and raise up for them their king, the son of David, to rule over your servant Israel. And in the time known to you, O Most High, undergird him with the strength to destroy the unrighteous rulers, to purge Jerusalem from Gentiles, who trample her to destruction, in wisdom and in righteousness, to drive out the sinners 
from the inheritance, okay? To smash the arrogance of sinners like a potter's jar, to shatter all their substance with an iron rod, to destroy the unlawful nations with the word of his mouth, okay? At his warning, the nations will flee from his presence and he will condemn sinners by the thoughts of their hearts, okay? And it says, he will gather a holy people, which is what he's doing right now, whom he will lead in righteousness. And he will judge the tribes of the people that have been made holy by the Lord, their God. Now, you know, this whole world has their own God. They have their own power. And that's when we sometimes get into arguments with people when they're talking about, you know, well, my God did this, my God did that. And they're assuming, yeah, they have their own gods and we have ours, but ours is the only one that actually has power. You know, and he's actually starting to show now, he's starting to make things manifest, okay? So, you know, for a time, during the time of the Gentiles, which is what we're going to be reading about a little bit, you know, all knowledge and understanding was taken out of the earth. And that's what that's what the um, Psalms of Solomon was talking about, you know? But now, you know, it's coming back. The understanding is coming back, okay? And that's what, we're, that's what we're coming back into now, okay? Now the lion's roaring again and bringing back the truth, knowledge of understanding okay and let's go ahead and continue reading uh luke 21 i'll continue with 25. well actually you know what let me just start at 24 again and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and jerusalem shall be trodden down of the gentiles until the times of the gentiles be fulfilled and that's what i think that this in my opinion you know this that's what this was uh signifying and you're gonna see a little bit more of this gonna be going on in this video shortly Okay, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations. But let's take a look at that uh, a little bit more on that 25. Okay, and there shall be signs in the sun. That's what you just saw right now. The sun turning black and in the moon right again. Okay, the sun, the moon not giving her light. Okay, and in the stars. That's supposed to happen 33 days later with the Revelation 12 sign. So it's telling you right there in order how things are going to happen with the sun, the moon, and the stars, okay? And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, okay? Now you're starting to see, that's what you're starting to see now coming on the earth, okay? These signs, okay? Let's go ahead and continue reading 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let's continue for a couple more minutes here with this video. Now watch, nothing is moving. See, nothing is moving. There's no moon going across there. It just lit up by itself again. You know, and it's going to light up all the way across. There is no totality or nothing like that. The sun went completely the fuck out. And the moon, you know, it's turned red. See, watch, ain't nothing moving across there. The sun is just lighting back up by itself. Well, by God. And so we are living the revelations right now. And this is just a sign for the day of the Lord, which states... The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And that is what we're seeing here. The sun is black. It went the fuck out. And the moon is turned to blood. Rap the news. Y'all tell me what you think. We close, y'all. Okay, beautiful. Um, I have one more video. Here, I'm going to kind of get to real quick. Let me pull this one up. Here. Let's go full screen on this one too. All right, this is another good one as well. Okay, another one from Raptor News. There was a couple of them, real short videos this morning. All right, here we go. Folks, if today don't get even stranger, today we had an eclipse that was not our moon. The moon, people don't understand, is not even supposed to be showing today. You know, and uh, basically it shouldn't be showing until tomorrow or the day after. But that's not that's that's one point I did a whole video on 
that that wasn't our moon that eclipsed our sun. Where did the moon go after the eclipse? It disappeared because that eclipse, eclipse was from above. But inside that eclipse, the star of David was shining bright for all to see that our king is back and it's time for our deliverance. I said God was going to take off the shackles off of the true Hebrew Israelites today. And if that ain't the sign that he did, I don't know what other sign are we waiting on. So it is saying your king has arrived. You are free men right now, Israel. And your God is coming for you. We're going to see what happens. Wrap the news. Okay. So, but I want to read a little bit, a couple more scriptures real fast. Now, I know some people say, oh, the Star of David, that's this and that's that. Hey, that's, that's, you can, we can have those discussions another time. At this point, let's just look at what we, what we can kind of see going on in the sky. There's, there's the anomalies going on. There's things that are going on that don't make any sense. And let's take a look at what the scriptures say. Okay. Because, <laughs> these these things are unexplainable. People aren't really talking about it. They're just kind of, you know, oh yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of weird things yesterday, but they don't really go into it. You know, what do the scriptures say? You know, what what are the what is this how is this going to relate to a Hebrew perspective? You know, now what I want to take a look is I'm going to get into one more other one of the other books real fast, uh Second Baruch. Someone had made a comment before like, "Oh, Second Baruch." I said, "Yes, there is actually a book of Second Baruch, and there's actually a lot of great information in there." Um, if you actually want to read it, you know, uh, the Sefer actually has the book of second Baruch. Uh, I recommend that book. It's actually really good. I, the book of Enoch's in there. Jasher's in there. Jubilees is in there. Uh, it's a really good book as well. It's got a lot of different, um, books and a lot of, uh, other information that a lot of the Hebrews have not, uh, been exposed to, but I'm going to read a little bit here. First thing I'm going to read is Matthew 24 and 30. Okay. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Okay. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, you know, why will they be mourning? Why will these uh, the other nations, it says all the tribes of the earth are going to mourn. You know, they're going to see the, you don't want to know why they're going to be mourning. is because they're going to see the, of course, they're going to see the Son of Man in heaven. But they're also going to see the transformation of the elect. And that's actually talked about in the book of um, Second Baruch. I want to read a little bit of it to you. You know, it kind of goes a little bit with Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 5. But it's, this gives you even more information as to why, like, the Gentiles are going to be so surprised, what they're going to be seeing. You know, and that's what that's the season that we are in right now, brethren. You know, and that's what we need to be concentrating on. You know, I said because there's a lot of things that are going on right now. But let's go ahead and read this real quick. It's going to be the last one for today. Second Baruch chapter 51, uh, verses three through 10. Also, as for the glory of those who have now been justified in my Torah, who have had understanding in their life and who have planted in their heart the root of wisdom, then their splendor shall be glorified in changes and the form of their face shall be turned into the light of their beauty that they may be able to acquire and receive the world which does not die, which is then promised to them. For over this, above all, shall those who come and then lament that they were rejected, that they rejected my Torah and stop their ears that they might not hear wisdom or receive understanding. When therefore they see those over whom they are now exalted, so that when they, with the people who are now today are exalted over us, when they see us, okay, and let's read that part again, I love that. When therefore they see those over whom they are now exalted, but who shall then be exalted and glorified more than they, they shall respectively be transformed, the latter into the splendor of angels, and the former shall yet more waste away in wonder at the visions and in the beholding of the forms. For they shall first behold and afterwards depart to be tormented. So the Most High is going to first let them see us transform right before their eyes, okay, and see how we were in a lowly state, how we're going to be transformed into a high, you know, angelic state, spiritual state. And then after that, after they see that, then they're going to be taken away for torments, okay? But those who have been saved by their works and to whom the Torah has been now 
uh, a hope and understanding and expectation and wisdom, a confidence shall wonders, <clears throat> shall wonders appear in their time. For they shall behold the world which is now invisible to them, and they shall behold the time which is now hidden from them. And that time and, and time shall no longer age them. For in the heights of that world shall they dwell, and they shall be made like unto the angels, and be made equal to the stars. And they shall be changed into every form they desire, from beauty into loveliness, and from the light into the splendor of glory. Okay? So the other nations, you know, they're going to see the elect bees changed. Okay? Right before their eyes. And all the things that they have given up here, you know, they've gone through all the, all the torments here you know, they're going to be blessed in the future, in the very near future. I want to read two more verses from this uh, second Baruch, chapter 51. I'm going to skip up to 15 and 16. For what then have men lost their life? And for what have those who were on the earth exchanged their soul? Okay, these people here who are, are like the, the, the people who have given their, their souls for things here. What are they given it for? Okay. Six, verse 16. For then they chose not for themselves this time, Okay, which beyond the reach of anguish could not pass away, but they chose for themselves that time whose issues are full of lamentations and evils, and they denied the world which ages not, those who come to it, and they rejected the time of glory so that they shall not come to the honor of which I told you before. So the people here have rejected the heaven, the heavenly kingdom, the heavenly realm. They've given up that time you know, for the heavenly kingdom, for the little bit of glory that they would have now at this time. That, that's what this is mainly talking about. And it's talking about the transformations and everything else that's about to come. You know, if you look, if you actually looked at the, um, at the uh, eclipse here, you saw the light of the sun on one side, okay? And then it just goes out and then it's all dark. And then on the other side, then the light comes right back. That's kind of like a, the whole story of Israel. We were a light to the world for a time. Then we were um, taken away, you know, our knowledge and understanding. And it was darkness, utter darkness for a time. That was the time of the Gentiles. And now on the other side, just like it's showing right here, it's lighting back up again. The time of the Hebrews, okay, is coming back. Light brethren are coming back, okay? The one-third of the uh, women, children, is, is going, who's going to be saved as well, their time is coming. And that's what this is all showing, okay? There's beautiful times ahead, brethren. I pray that um, this video was edifying. Shalom.